Version 1 of Dino just launched, but what does that mean for you? Is it going to replace Node? Is all of the hard work that you've spent learning Node completely wasted? Let's find out. But first, I want to give you an entire year of free hosting. And that's by using today's video sponsor, Atlantic.net Hosting. They're giving you an entire year-long free trial of their hosting, and if you use the code KYLE when you check out, you're going to get an additional $50 of credit you can use towards whatever you want. On top of that, these servers are incredibly powerful, they have great data reliability and redundancy, so you don't have to worry about your data disappearing or going offline. Make sure you check out Atlantic.net using the link down below. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this. Now Dino version 1 has just recently released, and this is a new runtime for JavaScript. So think about Node, which you already know, and Dino is essentially an upgraded, newer version of Node.js. It's actually created by the exact same person that made Node.js. And the reason they decided to create Dino was because they saw all of the problems with Node, they saw all of the old technology that was used to build Node, and they thought that they could do it better. They wanted to essentially recreate Node.js in a better form, and that's why they created Dino. And Dino is a new runtime which is built on Rust, which is going to be very similar to Node and do a lot of the same things Node does, but with a lot of advantages. One of the biggest advantages that Dino has over Node is that it has built-in TypeScript support. So if you are someone that uses TypeScript when you write JavaScript, you can just use it out of the box with Dino. It has the compiler and everything built in, so you don't have to worry about any TypeScript configuration. It's all there for you. Another amazing thing about Dino is the way that they actually handle browser compatibility and module imports. So in Node.js, if you want to, for example, fetch a resource, you have to import a library to do that, while in the browser, you can just use fetch. Also, you'll notice a lot of the Node-based APIs are all using callbacks instead of using promises or async await, which is just the newer, more modern way of doing things in JavaScript. So with Dino, they kind of scratched all of that old code, got rid of it, and said, we're going to make everything promise-based. So all of the async APIs use promises and async await. And on top of that, when you import modules, instead of using the old common JS way of doing things with Node where you have to use require and module.exports, you can actually import things just normally using the browser-based import-export syntax from ES6. And this, I think, is one of the biggest advantages of Dino, is just having that ability to do things just like you would in the browser. On top of that, almost all of the browser APIs that you can think of, on top of that, pretty much every single browser API out there, for example, fetch, is built into Dino. That means if you write Dino code, you can just run it in the browser or you can run it outside the browser using Dino. And this is really powerful. So pretty much as long as you don't have Dino specific code, you can run your code in the browser or you can run it in Dino. So I think that is really powerful that you don't have to relearn how to do things. Because with Node, you kind of had to relearn a lot of things like how to fetch resources and how to use callbacks instead of promises. While with Dino, the code that you write in the browser is essentially the same as the code you write in Dino, so you don't have to worry about figuring out two different types of writing the same code, you can just write the same code. On top of that browser compatibility, Dino takes it a step further, and they include a standard library with a bunch of really useful packages, for example, things for handling date times and colors, and things that aren't already built into the browser. So this allows you to take essentially what the browser has and add on to it another step of really useful code that is built into this standard library. And the great thing about a standard library is that you can use this standard library, which is the same across all Dino projects, instead of having to rely on importing modules from NPM that do these standard things for you. It's just built into Dino, which makes it so much easier to do common tasks such as dealing with dates or colors, for example. And this standard library is really well vetted and it's going to constantly expand and expand, which means you're going to get more functionality built into Dino as time goes on. Now, one more thing that Dino does way better than Node is handling security. Dino is based around security as its first principle. So in order to run an application, which, for example, accesses your file system or accesses the Internet, requires you to explicitly pass permissions to do those things when you run the program. That way, 
if you import a package in Dino and that package got corrupted somehow by someone taking over the package and injecting bad code that is going to delete all of the files on your computer. If that happened in Node and you ran your file that had that package in it, you would lose everything on your computer. It would delete everything. But in Dino, unless you explicitly give your program the ability to delete files from your computer, that package that got corrupted is not going to be able to do anything because it doesn't have the permission to delete those files from your computer. So Dino is really taking a great stance on security by having these permissions built in where you don't have to worry about other packages doing things that you don't want them to do on your computer or on your client's computers or on your web server. Now the last major difference between Dino and Node I really want to talk about is how they actually manage packages. With Node you have npm and you install all of your packages through npm and you store them in this package.json file which manages all of your different packages and you also have that big nasty node modules folder inside of your project. Well with Dino, they essentially got rid of all of that. Instead of using npm, your packages you can install from anywhere. As long as there is a URL that leads to a file, you can use that as your import statement for importing a file. So instead of having to download an npm package and then require that, you can just import directly from a URL anywhere that you want. And that is incredibly useful. On top of that, there is no package.json file for managing dependencies, and there is no node modules folder. All of that is just handled in the background for you, and all of your dependencies are saved in a central location on your computer, so you don't have to worry about having this massive node modules folder or this really unwieldy package.json. So as you can see, Dino has a lot of additional features over top of Node.js. So is it going to replace Node, and are you going to have to learn Dino instead of Node and just forget everything that you've learned over the last few years? Well, I have to say right now, that is not going to be the case. While Dino is really cool and has a lot of great features coming towards it, it's still only in early, early stages. It just hit version 1 very recently, which means a lot of the things that Dino is trying to do, it is still working on. For example, browser compatibility is still not 100%. They're still implementing browser APIs, and they're going to be continuing to implement those as time goes on, so that is going to be a continual effort. Also, when I mentioned that you don't use NPM with Dino, that is actually a little bit of a downside right now because JavaScript is based around NPM. There are so many NPM packages out there, and the problem is that not all of these packages are going to be compatible with Dino out of the box. If they rely on, for example, node-based APIs, Dino doesn't have all of the node-based APIs yet. So that is something that's a bit of a problem, is that NPM packages are not always going to work with Dino. So you kind of are missing out on a huge portion of what makes Node.js so popular, and that is one of the biggest reasons that I think that Dino is going to take a while before it starts to take off. As soon as people start writing more Dino-based packages, or as soon as Dino starts implementing some of those Node-based APIs, which allow you to take packages from NPM and actually use them inside of Dino, that is when we're going to see Dino really start to take off and start to become a more popular runtime as time goes on. But that's something that's going to take a while, and not just a couple weeks or a couple months, this is something that's going to take quite a few years. I don't really see Dino starting to take off and be used mainstream widely across multiple different companies until at least multiple years from now, at least two to five years until Dino really starts to pick up some steam. And then from there, it could even be another five to ten years from now until Dino really starts to replace Node.js. And I say that in quotes because I don't think Node will ever truly be replaced, at least in that 5-10 to 10 year period. It's going to still stick around and still be used in applications all over the world, because right now it is just so prevalent, so many people know it, and it's used in large scale applications. And replacing a huge application with Dino really doesn't make sense unless you're continuing to work on that application day in and day out, and you really need the benefits that Dino brings you. Right now, I really think Dino is a cool, a new way to look at JavaScript runtimes, but it's just not there yet in features. But I do think in a couple years, it'll really pick up steam and start to fill in all of those gaps that it's missing. And I think people are really going to start using Dino seriously instead of just thinking about it as a cool alternative to Node.js. And if you're interested in learning more about Dino and you want me to make a crash course on it, let me know down in the comments and I would love to make that video if there's interest in it. So with that out of the way, Thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to check out my other videos linked over here and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this.